Hello, everybody, and welcome to day 20 of 28 Days to Master Level Chess Tactics. Now, today we are going to look at the final day of interference. I'm going to give you two positions, and this position, it's white to move, and you can pause the video now. Okay, so in this position, the material is otherwise equal. I guess white is down a pawn, but the position of white is much more active, which makes up for that pawn. Now, of course, if black just tried to run this pawn down the board, it wouldn't really accomplish anything. Uh, white is quite simply just trying to mate the black king, and it looks like white wants to interfere somehow with this diagonal. Now, bishop to e4 doesn't work because the queen would just take the rook and get a quick mate. So, bishop to e4, you think you're going to have a mate next move, and then he takes your rook because you just gave away the defender of it. All right, so what to do here? Now, sometimes it's hard when a uh, square is controlled by multiple pieces and pawns, but actually that's what you need to look at. In this position, the interference tactic is g6. Now, it looks like if any, if either pawn takes, uh, then you get a quick mate on uh, h7. And if the queen takes, well, then you could just pin it with rook 2 g4. So a lot of times you can see that these interference tactics are in combination with other tactics in the end, namely a pin or a skewer type tactic, but there's or a double tack. Uh, but you can see that you're trying to interfere with the coordination of the pieces. All right, so this was a rather easy uh, warm up. All right, let's just look at a line here. Uh, let's let's say that Black plays uh, h6, which I think is practically a more difficult defense because if the queen takes, he just loses his queen. Then you, I guess you could just take here, and the rook has to take, you win a rook, and you'll get a checkmate anyway. And if he moves the king somewhere, like here, then you'll just checkmate, or here anyway. So, he has to basically take with his rook. Alright, let's move on to the second position. Alright, this position is black to move, and it is a much more complicated position, uh, but you're looking for an interference tactic and you want to try to calculate it all the way to the end of the line. I'll give you a second prompt in the middle of position as well. All right, so in this position, it's actually from a game between Anand and Aronian. Uh, Anand is black. This was played in 2008 in Linares, and it's very interesting because it came, it came from a martial position in the Roy Lopez as black, and you don't really see at the top level black getting such a strong attack. But in this position, Aronian has made some mistakes, and now he allows an interference tactic. So, White would just love to take this knight and get a quick mate on g2, but it's not so simple. Um, but with this pawn here advanced, it supports the interference tactic of rook to e3. And now, even if the queen moves, then he can just take this knight, uh, winning too much material. And if he takes the rook, which actually happened in the game, it's pretty much the only option. Now, you should see in your calculations that if the queen takes, it's not necessarily a simple mate on g2. Because the pawn took, the queen can go back to c2, and now the queen is covering g2, and the rook is covering f1, so you can't checkmate there. So you have to calculate a bit further in this position. All right, so if you want to pause the video now, you can do that, but let's just keep going. All right, takes, and then you have a couple more checks. Notice that uh, the bishop's covering here, so it has to drive the king here. Now you would get a checkmate in one, but of course the queen is still covering here, and also on g2. So if you want to pause the video and find the final tactic, we're just about there. Alright, so the bishop could move to g4 and threaten a checkmate, or at least winning the queen. Uh, but you need to see that if you play bishop to g4, the rook can come to f1. So if you play here... Rook comes to f1, and now you, you can't check here because remember that you gave away an exchange. So he would just sack back, and then actually you get an equal position, uh, potentially even losing, uh, but you'd be a pawn down, but you would be much more active. All right, so the final tactic is bishop to f5. And now you really are threatening both the queen and this check, and there's nothing that white can do about it. If he takes the bishop, which is undefended, then... You, Black gets a checkmate on h2. And, I mean, if he moves the queen, I guess he would have to move here. You could just pin it. You're going to get a mate. 
And if he moves the queen and you get a check, then he has to give up his queen anyway. All right, so this was a very interesting interference tactic in a high-level game. You can see that when you actually look for these kind of tactics, they can appear rather simple, but it's really the follow-up uh, tactical application that can be hard in these interference tactics because a lot of times the interference tactic will start with making your opponent's pieces uncoordinated, you win material, or you get an advantageous position or attack, but then you ha always have to follow it up with correct play, uh, keep making threats, and then eventually hopefully you'll get a mate or a win of a queen or enough material to win. This concludes day 20 of interference and it's the final day of interference. I'm gonna move on in the next three days actually for blockade just to cover that because it is a very important tactical and strategical idea and I'm, I wanna devote three full days to it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the future. Don't fret if you got the solution wrong There will be another time